Professor Walter Longo, director of the USC Longevity Institute and also director of the program on cancer and longevity at the IFOM Institute in Milan. The rejuvenation from within is really at the center of a lot of this and the, re and the reason is that uh, the body uh, when undergoes this fasting mimicking diet it essentially shrinks, gets rid of a lot of junk, then turns on stem cells. Not just stem cells, it also turns on intracellular, so the cell starts eating its own parts, it's called autophagy. And then the real rebuilding occurs when you refeed. When you go back to the normal diet, that's why it's tricky, right? Because the normal diet should be nourishing diet. So when you combine this fasting, fasting mimicking diet, and then the refeeding, now you get rid of the junk, uh, turn on stem cells, turn on intracellular processes, and then you refeed, you rebuild. And now you have younger cells, more functional cells. And of course, some of the junk is gonna be cancer cells, precancerous cells, autoimmune cells, etc. The priority of the history of, of human beings, fasting was a normal uh, event. So every so often people fasted, and we think the fasting was very much like uh, sleep is right now, right? So it has a purpose. You don't just sleep because you happen to sleep. Is you sleep for, for many different reasons. And one of the reasons for sleeping may be, in fact, repairing. Uh, things that, are, that have been damaged and also recuperating. Right? So fasting may have very well had that effect. Now for the last 50 years, for the first time in human history, we abandoned completely this because nobody runs out of food anymore. The, the fasting seems to be able to go, let's say, and take an autoimmune cell and destroy it preferentially, take a cancer cell or a precancer cell and destroy it. Why is that? Well, the, the normal cells, in any organism that you see out there is very much used to responding to starvation. If they're starving, no problem. They've seen it before for billions of years. They can respond very well. Cancer doesn't understand starvation. Why? Because cancer cells have evolved with people eating all the time. So now all of a sudden, when the cancer cell finds itself with less growth factors, less sugar, less uh, amino acids or different profile of amino acids, has never seen that environment before. The normal cells have seen that environment, they can deal with it, the cancer cells don't. And so now, over and over and over, we're showing the same effects as chemotherapy with a cycle of fasting making diet. So let's say somebody does once a month a cycle of fasting making diet, you could have the benefits that you get from chemotherapy. Now, we don't know for sure, this is why we have, to, we know it from mice, very clear. If we start the fasting making diet in middle age in a mouse, we cut the cancer rate by about 50 percent. So, you know, just by doing it a, a few in mice a few times a month, which would be like a few times a year equivalent for people. And uh, so, so yes, yeah, very powerful effects, chemotherapy-like. In some cases, even more powerful than chemotherapy, just by doing the uh, the fasting mimicking diet. The fasting mimicking diet is a diet that mimics fasting, and we have recently tested clinically. Um, and in the clinical trial, we showed that it has effect, for example, on IGF-1 and also on inflammation. And both IGF-1 and inflammation are uh, risk factors or certainly potential contributors to cancer and the survival of cancer cells. For example, IGF-1 is one of the major factors that keep cancer cells alive. So if you have if you can lower this uh, level uh, all the time and if you can lower systemic inflammation, as we already shown in, in, sub, in human subjects, now you may uh, decrease the, the chance of, uh, of developing cancer or having a cancer uh, recurrence. And um, now we're testing that, we're beginning to test that in, uh, in a clinical trial in, in Southern Italy. And I think in a few years we'll already have preliminary results at least on, uh, on the potential of this periodic fasting making diet done once a month. Uh, in the uh, prevention of uh, cancer recurrence, particularly in people that have BRCA1 and BRCA2 uh, mutations. Well, the fasting mimicking diet was really a, very important to standardize it and to also make sure that people uh, don't risk their lives while they're trying to solve a problem. Well, to us it was important to make sure that we have the medical community involved, we have the registered dietitians involved, and we have something that 
is being clinically tested and now is being clinically tested for cancer treatment, cancer prevention, etc., etc. We need two major studies. One is what if you take BRCA1, BRCA2 uh, subjects that either had cancer or um, just are high risk for cancer and we give them either the everyday diet, the, the once a month fasting making diet or both, what happens, right? So those are the, the two interventions, the everyday intervention and the periodic fasting making diet intervention. What if we combine it with something very safe or, you know, safe like metformin or rapamycin, uh, particularly if we do the rapamycin together with the fasting making diet, and these are drugs that are FDA approved for many uses. What if we combine it? Could we have a, a major effect on, say, BRCA1, BRCA2 uh, chance of developing cancer? Our goal is to eliminate a major portion of disease, right? So, for example, in the mice, they live 11% longer and they, if you start at middle age, if you start on the fasting making diet, but then they have half of the, the tumors and it looks like even their health, a lot of them are benign versus malignant. So it completely revolutionizes the chance of getting cancer, right? So it might be two thirds of the cancers are not there, but at least 50%, but maybe two thirds. So this is not just about, oh, you're gonna get it when you're 90 instead of 70, is you're not gonna get a portion of people, are not gonna get it at all. So we already know in mice and humans, both genetically modified or with the diet. And now the, the genes that I just described are controlled by the diet. So the fasting making diet controls these genes, right? And so we, we know from both mouse studies and human studies that this can be done. It's just we need more studies to, to demonstrate that you can do it just with the diet and that you can do it with a periodic diet that doesn't uh, necessarily revolutionize your everyday diet.